How's it going everybody? Rob Banks from the Red Cup Review and today we're looking at the Aragon figure from the 1-6 scale collection Lord of the Rings from Asmus Toys. I want to remind everybody you gotta subscribe. Let's get those subscribes up, some likes and some shares. Uh, I hope you enjoy the video and if there is a figure you are looking forward to for Asmus to do from the Lord of the Rings collection that they haven't done yet or maybe a figure you hope that they redo, leave it in the comments below. He came out of the box, his hair was kind of matted on the sides. It looked like he came out of a dunk tank. But what you do is, you see how like these hairs are kind of like sticking out like that? You really don't notice them too much in person. It's just because of the contrast of the, the, uh, the light blue background. But it actually adds fullness to the head itself. So what you got to do is you got to take like, I took a little, 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 tiny little bit of tweezers. I'm going to show you kind of what I did here with the pen. And you kind of fluff it out a little. You fluff it out, you pull it, you pull it out to kind of put fullness in the head. So it doesn't look like it's soaked and stuck to his face. The hairs are very, very tight. And like, I don't know what kind of crazy gel they put on this, his hair, but it's it's really tight to his head. So you're going to kind of have to pull and massage it out a little bit and then re-get uh, it to go the way you want. For those of you that are used to dealing with rooted hair, I'm not. I'm not a fan of rooted hair, but it works perfectly on Aragon here. And another reason why you want to pull it out forward a little bit is because on the sides of the head, you see the head sculpt is weird. Like the head pops onto the neck piece, but the face is actually separate. It's like the back of the head is glued to the front of the head with the hair rooted in there and then there's the neck, pe neck peg up underneath the neck. So if you just grab him by the face and pull, you're gonna pull his face off. I actually read about somebody that tried to pull his head off and they tried to pull it off this way and the whole head just, the face just, he pulled his face off but not Nicolas Cage face off. So you pull the hair forward and it kind of masks that little, you see that right there? See how it looks like it's like a face mask he's wearing? You just pull the hair forward a little and it disguises that very, very nicely. So you pull it out, you make it look a little bit more full and nice. Let's see if we can get a close-up on the eyes because the eyes are really well done. There's a nice little close-up of his eyes. And the camera is actually catching details that your naked eye isn't even going to catch. You can see that up in his face. He has like the skin texture is really nice. You can actually see the pores on the face in this uh, figure. The paintwork on the face was exceptionally well done. It's not a perfect portrait, I mean, it, but then again, for the price point, you're getting something really nice. Now, again, when you pull them out, see how I have like these strands kind of hanging over? These weren't there. This was all matted back, like I said before, pushed off of his face. So you're going to want to work very gently and maneuver those little hairs forward. He does not have the similar ratchet joints on his arms, so his arms will you know, they fall, the uh, the Frodo and Sam kind of click as you bring the arms up, but the arms do kind of stay on their own. I wouldn't pose my figure like that anyway. However, the reason why that's important is the sword. When you put this die cast heavy piece of material in his hands, it will weigh it down. So you're going to have to figure out how to not have it weigh down. We'll give a shot later when the sword's in his hand, but the sword is heavy, so be careful with that. I am not crazy about this material. I don't know what it is. If this is the new material that they're using on the Devil May Cry figure, then yes, it'll be awesome because I actually felt that in hand. I just don't remember because it was a little while ago. And it won't really deteriorate. This feels like it'll fall apart if you're in not climate-controlled weather. For some reason, they do not have a wire running down here. But the wire starts here and here. And there's two wires that run down to the bottom. And then there's no wire running down the bottom. But I guess that's to give it like a, I don't know, like his cloak is like swinging open. But it doesn't really hold because there's no wire up here. It doesn't go up to the top. It just stops right about there. So that's kind of like silly why they would do that. I guess it's just for like subtle looks. Anyways, there's a knit. Another knit. You strap on his, his um, little dagger here and it'll slip right out of the case. The problem there is, is because it's such a, the, all the weapons are die cast. They're top heavy, so it tends to lean forward as opposed to leaning back like it should, just like that. But there's all the weight is in the front of the handle of the dagger, so it leans either side to side or when you mess with it, it tends to lean forward. So be careful with that. Just don't go shaking them around because this will slip right out. Then you get the sword, the big sword uh, scabbard. Right? That's what it's called, a scabbard, right? Well, look, it fits perfectly. When it's like that and the sword's not his hand, it... All the weight comes back this way, and it sits fine. Forward. Look at that. It sounds awesome, right? Great sound effect. And then... 
dips forward. Not cool. Not cool at all. Weep, right out. So what you do is, my little thing that I do is I put this over, and then it kind of holds it straight up. So when you put the sword in, it only kind of dips forward a little bit. But you have the pressure of the cloak back here because there's another wire running through this back piece. And you got the cloak, keeping it kind of from dipping forward too far. Articulation, his arms go up about way high, come down, his knees, uh, the material is like spandexy on the legs. You could, those ratchet, there's the ratchet joint. So those will hold their poses. And this goes all the way back too. It's, it's a single knee, but it'll go all the way back. So you could have him actually like kneeling, you know, and he'll look good doing it too. Like, here you go, here, kneeling, kneel, kneel before Zod. He ain't kneeling before anyone. He's the king. I didn't un undo this, so I don't know what's underneath here. But there's probably like another shirt under there. I don't know, but I don't need to go undressing my toys. Oh, here we go. Here's a thing. There's the piece, a pendant that don't be pulling on this. Don't go pulling on this because it will snap and it tucks away. This is his little Elvis sigil that Arwen gave him. The gauntlets also come separate when you open the figure up. And they got a nice little uh, design going on them. You could also see the hand there. And what I'm probably going to do is dirty it up. I'm going to get myself some paint, some dry brush, and, you know, dirty it up a little bit. Because I think that looks too clean. I think the look on these are a little too clean. But they are nicely done, and they do have a ton of detail. So with a little bit of more dry brushing, the details are really going to pop. There's the back of them. The buckles. Those are not real buckles. It's all plastic. And it's hard, too. This is a hard plastic, so it's not soft and smushy. Here's just another issue. You go to put these gauntlets on, it's going to crinkle up his outfit up in here. So that's another reason to worry, I guess, a little bit. Come on, guy! The cloak. You take him out of the box. You got to pop his head off, but again, be really careful with that. Then you put the cloak on. You slip it over his neck. This is not a class pierce. You actually have to slip it over his head. You pop the head sculpt back on, and you're left with this. It looks terrible. They should have added a little stitch on either side so it could have pinned it down, and it would have made a world of a difference. So my little quick fix... I take the cloak, look at that, that's terrible. Take the cloak and you kind of fold it over while pinching it down. Fold it over, pinch it down a little, and then there you go. Now he looks dynamite, look at that. Davigo Mortensen, that's his name right, Mortensen, Mortensen, Morrissey, Vigo Morrissey. Okay, this height comparison time between Aragon and his two hobbitses that he rolls with. I don't have Merry and Pippin, so you, as you can see, they're all on the same equal level playing field here. I do not have Aragon on the stand, and it'll give you a good idea of how they're going to look in the cabinet next to one another. Here's a quick shot of all of his accessories. Remember, this is the Aragon Slim version, so he doesn't come with as much. You got an open hand, a closed fist, another closed fist, one for holding a sword, the actual sword, both of his daggers, the sheets that you saw before, his little pendant from Arwen that's still on the figure, and his cloak, and a nice little neat Lord of the Rings crotch grabber stand. Exhibit A, the Sword of the King, which is totally die cast and it's very heavy. Not very, very heavy, but it's heavy for an accessory. It's probably one of the nicest accessories I've ever seen for a six scale figure. Totally die cast done, which means it's got a nice little shine to it. It's got weight. It is very, very, very well made and it is heavy. It's almost like a letter opener. His dagger that goes into the other sheath. Here's the dagger and here's some, look at the detail on that. That is very, very nice, very well made. The wood looks like wood. The metal feels like metal. It's cold to the touch. It's got a nice pointy tip. And here is the other dagger he comes with that goes into his sword sheath. And it's very well made, very nice. And his pipe. What would Aragon be without his pipe? What would any of these Lord of the Rings characters be without their pipes? All right, no, no, there's nothing in the pipe to smoke, but it does have a little bit of tar, resin, black paint going on towards the back, which is a nice little attention to detail too. His hands, he's got hands. The rings look really nice. There's the ring shot I was looking for before. This hand isn't too bad. You can still see a little bit of the lines there. See there, yeah, that's where it starts to get a little unsightly, except that I'll never have him with the straight up fist because I'm gonna have him with his sword or his dagger in his hand or smoking his pipe. So, unsightliness right there, as you could see. So, no, no, that's a big no-no, Asmus. 
Aragon lends himself to a lot of cool dynamic poses. In closing, I just want to let you know that this pose right here ain't fitting in your cabinet, so don't even think about it, because that sword is pretty huge. But you can get him into all kinds of cool poses, stoic and whatnot, and his face sculpt is pretty perfect for both. And what I'll probably be doing is customizing the face in ways where I may take some clear paint and dab it on his brow to give him that little bit of a sweat effect. Yeah, he looks dynamite there. There he is. He's ready to chop down some more. Final thoughts on the Aragon figure. I really want to give him four cups, but I can't. When you look at him on the shelf and he's just sitting there and he's kind of surrounded by his hobbits and stuff, he's a dynamite figure and his presentation is four, four and a quarter cups. But when you really get up close, there's a couple of nits that kind of bring it down a little bit. So I got to be fair, although I want to give him four and a quarter, I'm going to have to go with about Three and three, three and a half to three and three quarters. You tell Ed McMahon. I'm trying to be Ed McMahon on this one, but I'm trying to be as stars. fair as possible. Here's the box. Uh, thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe. I hope you guys liked the video. You got the cups. Now you got to get the subscription. We'll see you on the next episode.